Ready? Fine. So I just rub my nose, it's quite red. <laughs> <laughs> Who's intro in then? <laughs> Me, I <don't. laughs> Hi guys, Kerry's here from Fit Food <laughs> with the uh, awesome... Me? <laughs> Matt. And today we're going to be chatting about comfort eating. <laughs> Woohoo! Five um, tips to comfort eating. Yeah, how to do it properly. How to comfort eat effectively. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you get the best out of it. No. <laughs> to get real comfort. Um, we know that it's not really a laughing matter because comfort eating can cause a lot of emotional distress. And we know because we both do it occasionally. Um, we've had bigger battles in the past with it. I'd say mm -hmm. both of us have had some real kind of, you know, times in our life where we've really, you know, this has been a big issue for us. And now we've kind of got a bit more uh, of a hold over things. We've got better kind of, I'd say, better mental health, um, better kind of understanding of our body so we can see triggers, we can preempt, okay, I can see I'm just going to want to absolutely smash a, a huge bar of chocolate in this situation. So we kind of make steps, put steps in place to, to stop that happening, essentially. Um, but we thought we'd talk to you guys about it today. I was actually going to start by asking Matt, um, when was the last time you would say you... And we, we should also just differentiate between both Matt and I uh, have situations where we go out and, and decide that we're going to have a bottle of wine, a big bottle of chips and a dessert. That's not comfort eating. That's no. Matt and I every night. No, it's it's not embracing a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> That's moderation, yeah. 80 20. Um, we do that. We don't consider that comfort eating and we don't tend to go out together and, and say, let's just drown our sorrows in, in this food. Mm. Um, but when you do do that sort of thing, both of us would probably, I'd definitely say I do it more secretly from you. Um, oh, it's <laughs> so do you. <laughs> so do you. I would say I kind of <laughs> sneak off. Um, generally because I'm kind of in need of, of, of you know, just a, a little mood boost or I'm bored. Boredom is my biggest trigger. Um, and I, I won't kind of mention to you that I'm, I'm going to go and eat a load of chocolate, but I do. And um, with you, I would definitely say Matt is, is, is worse than me. He's a proper Bridget Jones. I'm a you? colossal comfort eater. Yeah, <laughs> in terms of frequency and amount. It's, it's no secret. It's no secret. <laughs> and... Um, I will generally hear he'll do it secretly and I'll hear little... So I'll try to do it secretly. Yeah, try to do it secretly. Stealth but mode. But I, I know where stuff is in the kitchen. I'll hear the chink chink of a, a jar. The yeah. fridge or the freezer when he opens it pretty much shakes. Have so you I made it that way? Yeah, little traps. <laughs> I go, Matt, what are you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> if it's peanut m and it's dead obvious because you hear the jingle, jingle, jingle. They are far too noisy. <laughs> they are far too noisy. But both of us, as I mentioned, kind of have things that we do in advance. It doesn't always work. Sometimes we're just, okay, whatever. But we also have things that we don't do anymore in response to comfort eating, wouldn't you say? So oh, we don't then go, okay, next day we're just going to smash the gym. We're going to get that out of our system. That does not work. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I was going to say, you know, like we, we both do, you know, we do still seek comfort from food in time, uh, at times, you know, just like everybody else. But I suppose over the years, we're just... Uh, I suppose better equipped to make smarter comfort eating decisions if you like <laughs> Pro dark chocolate not milk <laughs> probably probably what you do uh, to be fair like you only really eat dark chocolate you just you know if some days i'll be like oh yeah there was an underground bar here not yeah. five minutes ago <laughs> Where, where's that gone where's my bit um but i suppose it's more the aftermath of a of a of a, of a binge if you like, um, for whatever reason, because, you know, something's kicked off at work or you've had a barney with a family member or yeah. whatever it may be that has, has caused you to seek comfort from food. Um, it's normally the, the after effects that cause the biggest problems, because for a lot of people, let's say you are on a diet plan, a nutrition plan, whatever it may be, you're trying to lose weight, whatever. And you've had a moment, you've raided the freezer and you've got the, you know, my choice is always ice cream. <laughs> um, you know, which can and is very much part of my healthy lifestyle because sometimes I choose to have ice cream. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to have a treat. I'm going to treat myself. Oh, I've not tried that flavour before. I'll have that and we'll watch a film and I'll, and I'll eat the whole tub, damn it. Every single drop. <laughs> um, and I don't regret it. I don't feel bad about it. I don't sweat it. Next day's a new day. So now what I try to do is I try to replicate that if I've come for eight. So if I have had a moment where, you know, things have, I don't know, a bit stressful at work, long hours, the usual kind of suspects, if you like, and I'm just like, oh, sod it. Where's the ice cream at or whatever it may be? And, you know, I eat a tub of ice cream. 
probably don't enjoy it as much because I'm probably eating it for an emotional reason as opposed to a choice and a treat. So you never quite enjoy it as much anyway. Then you feel a little bit crappy afterwards because you're like, oh, oh, you know, I feel a bit bloated, you know, sugar crash, whatever. Whereas the difference now is I can actually happily not continue that binge and go, you know, what, I've had my ice cream, you know, whatever, go to sleep. But then the next day, start my day afresh. You know, I don't start thinking, oh gosh, that's my diet out the window. I'll sod it, you know, I might as well start again on Monday, the classic line. And I'll just start my day, be it with a, a walk with Hamish, you know, a gym sesh, a nice solid protein and fat based breakfast, which is how I tend to start most days anyway. And, and I'm right back to, you know, right back into the groove, so to speak. So like I say, you know, still, still come for eat, but I just deal with it better. A good, I mean, a good takeaway from what Matt just said is, is just be kind to yourself well, afterwards. So, for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't think the next day you've got to smash yourself in the gym. Think of some form of exercise that you would look forward to that morning. So it might be a walk, a yoga, a dance session. It might be a gym session, but do it because you're like, yep, do you know what? I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. I've got a bit of extra energy going on um, so I can go and train. So do something because one of the reasons that we, we basically will hit you know, or, or head towards comfort eating is usually we're trying to escape a situation and we're trying to seek reward in something. So take a step back. Um, maybe you go and eat the chocolate, maybe you have the ice cream, but then take a step back and think about what caused that situation to happen and then do your best to deal with it the next day. So generally a bit of exercise is going to help lift your mood. So then you've got a bit of stamina, a bit of power to go, right, I'm going to tackle this head on now, whatever it was that caused it. And uh, for me, so I mentioned boredom is a big trigger for me. So mm -hmm. then I will go somewhere um, and I'll set myself the goal of finishing this boring task and, um, you know, maybe be somewhere quiet and, and like a library or something and I won't be distracted. Phone goes off, internet's off, nail the task, I'm done, I'm dusted and then I'm kind of free to go. And that, and that in itself will just boost my mood, I get that sense of achievement and so, you know, I'm kind of over the whole situation. And like you, I never try and out train the fact that I ate too much chocolate. It always backfires because if anything, you might have kind of had... But you used to. I used that, to. That, I used you know, to. So that, yeah. that's... And, as you, we both did. And we both learned the hard way that you're kind of derailing your blood sugar levels and then trying to overtrain, depleting various different nutrients, maybe causing even more um, hormonal issues because it's just too much stress for the body. And what you kind of need to do is step back and, and look at the cause of that situation. Mm -hmm. um, so our kind of main tips would be basically know what your triggers are and try and do something about those triggers so if it's boredom think of the situations and try and work around those be in an environment where you can be much more efficient and productive with your time so yeah. you get boring tasks done quicker um, if it's more kind of emotional then seek some kind of like support this could be counseling it could be um, meditation yoga it could be just calling your best mate and talking it through um, someone who's going to help you support you mm -hmm. a little bit don't kind of be a you know to close a closed book about stuff and then it just kind of all come out in a big bag of peanut m ms <laughs> like, also as well like um oh, no, i'm summarizing here oh, okay. <laughs> i was going to add to the summary carry on okay wash in the okay. don't uh don't try and out train it the next day but do try and do some form of exercise that you love that's going to boost your mood and then kind of give you the the, the kind of um the energy to carry on and kind of make good decisions and like matt said have a good breakfast ready the next day um, and maybe or, a good, or, good few, or just, few meals. Just your prepped. next meal. Yeah, your yeah. next few meals. Have those prepped ready. I tend to favour higher protein because it's the building blocks of good mood uh, brain chemicals. So I know higher protein always kind of gets me back on track. Um, don't necessarily stay that way, but it just for a few meals, I'll up that and then I'll feel better and I'll go, right, okay, um, back to kind of my normal routine of eating. Mm -hmm. What were you going to add? Well, I was just going to say, <laughs> you, Sorry, know, you know, think about like, you know, if you start seeing a common pattern between you know what what your triggers are and identify them like Kerry said, but also start thinking back and, and, and thinking back to the last time you comfortate and and say to yourself, well, did it work? Yeah, it's you know, did did it make the, this pain or the stress go away? Chances are it didn't. What what kind of like put you in that state of mind in the first place will still be there once you've got to the bottom of the tub of ice cream. It offers you that very small window of i suppose uh, brief satisfaction which is normally often followed by a bit of guilt regret and then po possibly stomach like a ache. stomach ache <laughs> yeah. you know this negative yeah. kind of like domino effect if you like yeah, that could yeah. you know really derail you both you know, you know let's just you know let's forget about fat loss for a moment but for your health your well-being your energy levels and your kind of like future mood 
Um, I always remember, always remember um, that someone said to me about if you want to motivate yourself to exercise, you have to kind of capture and remember the moment when you get that endorphin high. And there's something that you can press on your palm, isn't there? I can't remember what it is. Really? And it makes you remember that sensation, that feeling. And then when you want to run, you press on your palm or your thumb or something. I can't, I can't remember exactly. And you get that same that kind of draw towards running again because you're like, I want to have that feeling. So maybe the same thing would work when you're kind of post comfort eating, feeling a bit grotty. But you do need to kind of capture that feeling and think, before you go there, do you really want to go there? Mm-hmm. And like, ask yourself that question, you know, do I really want to, how am I going to feel at the very end of this? And really kind of be strong in kind of saying this to yourself over and over again. Make that statement, do I really want to feel like that again? Well, yeah. And that's the, you know, that, that's just such a good point because I think, Chances are, you know, if you if you are comfort eating, you've done it in the past multiple times, you probably know how it makes you feel, yeah. you know, later on that day, the following day. And funny enough, we were actually having this conversation earlier about like, gosh, like it, if you're always constantly trying to out train a bad diet or a binge or a whatever, you're like, gosh, like, what, what, a, what a boring way to exercise, constantly yeah. trying to fight against this kind of like, you know, this comfort eating or whatever it may be or an excess of calories you know and it really kind of takes away from what exercise is and you know how good it is for you you know exercise isn't just for weight management you know there's so many health benefits to lifting weights and running and moving and walking and whatever else but that's another video because we've, <laughs> we've waffled yeah my good lord this must be a quick video Keris. but hopefully it's been useful i, I certainly hope so point. i certainly hope so and but guys if you have liked the video if you can relate to what we're talking about here comment below tag some pals share the video even that'd be amazing um, and no doubt the more of these we do the better we'll get and we, we, <laughs> won't, we won't be waffling for 12 minutes and take up <laughs> too much of your day but uh, guys wherever you are whatever you're doing have an awesome day and always reach out to us here at Fit Food with any questions because we are here to help you aren't we? we are bye bye